Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and today is June 6th. It's actually June 11th, excuse me, it's the sixth month. It's June 11th, 2017, and today we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, the Sunday after Pentecost in many denominations. And Holy Trinity Sunday is both extremely simple and very complicated because it is the Sunday when, obviously, we celebrate the Trinity and We are a monotheistic Christian people, right? We say that we believe in one God. We're not polytheistic. We don't believe in many gods. We believe in one God, but we believe in God in three aspects. We believe in God in God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Some people prefer to say other terms that aren't um, so gendered. Um, I know many people prefer to say God as Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. But however you say it, it still comes down to God in one God in three persons or one God in three aspects. And again, It sounds really simple when you say that until you try to explain it, right? So how does that work? And if you've ever tried to explain the Trinity to small children, (laughs) on the one hand, small children can hold many things in tension, right? So God is three in one. Hey, no problem. They say, sure, I get that. Until they they and adults even start delving into that. So throughout history, there have been all of these different ways to try and describe God as Trinity, whether that is the, um, the three leaf clover, you know, it's one plant, but it has three leaves and that's not quite right. Or you can describe it as, um, as water. Water, it comes in three different forms, right? There's liquid, there's ice and there's gas, but that's not quite right either. That doesn't quite describe how God is three in one. This has been debated. This has been talked about for centuries, trying to figure out exactly what it means that God is one God in three aspects. We do not worship Jesus as a separate separate God. We do not worship the Holy Spirit as a separate God. They are all part of God. And so we are um, monotheistic. We believe in one God, but there's this tricky little trinity that comes into play. And trying to explain it sometimes can be very, very interesting. It can be very difficult, but People have been trying to do it for a long time, and I have not yet in my own life even come up with a way that makes absolute perfect sense to me. It's one of those things that um, Lutherans love a paradox. We love things that live in the gray area. It's not black. It's not white. You can't give it a definite answer one way or the other. We say that we are simultaneously saint and sinner. That is one of the paradoxes that we talk about. And I think for me, the Trinity is another one of those paradoxes. It's a bit of a gray area. I'm never going to this side of heaven be able to exactly explain it. I just have to have faith that it is so because that is what the Bible tells me, right? And there are certain things in the Bible that we take on faith. There's lots of things in the Bible. This doesn't mean that we just say, okay, that's how it is. And we don't, we don't try to figure anything out. We don't try to look into it further. We don't try to continue to make some sort of sense of it. But at a certain level, we just have to say, you know, this doesn't fully make sense to me, but I I have faith. I believe in a God in three persons, in three aspects, and the rest will come, right? I believe in God. I believe in Jesus as the Son of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit as being sent by Jesus after he had to depart from this world, after he ascended, after his death and resurrection. But 
he did not leave his disciples, his followers, us alone, right? So very for different aspects of the same God, God who we do not see. Uh, no one has ever seen God. We hear that in scriptures. But then Jesus, who was seen, maybe not by us because it was 2000 years ago, but he came as a human. He was born of a human mother. He lived as a human. He died as a human. And yet he was not only the son of God, he was God. And we get that in that first chapter and that first verse of the gospel of John in the beginning was the word. The word is Jesus. The word was God. The word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus is there even at the beginning in this form of the word. The Holy Spirit is there even at the beginning, but then at the right time, Jesus came. Jesus was tangible. This is why Jesus let so many people, you know, they were able to touch him. They were able to talk to him. He ate with them after his resurrection because he was still that tangible symbol of God in our midst. And the Holy Spirit isn't tangible per se, but it has been given to us as this gift. We are not left alone. We are given the Holy Spirit, the advocate to help us to go out into the world and to do God's work in that world. So those are some, those are my thoughts on the Holy Trinity. Uh, if you have heard or you have an explanation for the Holy Trinity that makes absolute sense to you, I would love to hear it. Uh, again, I'm going to say it. You can find me on social media. Uh, track me down and, and tell me if you've ever had someone who's explained it, whether that's a philosopher, whether that's a pastor, whether that's a favorite author, whatever it is. If you have had someone explain the Holy Trinity to you in a way that just absolutely made sense to your very soul, I would love to hear it. So we are going to look at um, all four texts again in this episode. I'm still not quite to the place schedule wise that I can do four episodes in a week, a four part episode in a week. My husband is scheduled for surgery this week. Thank you so much for all of your prayers and your your good wishes and your thoughts. We really, really appreciate them. Um, but it does make for a little bit of a hectic week. So there is that going on. I'll be doing, I do have one more episode scheduled for the end of the week. I have another Friends on Faith on Friday scheduled with a friend of mine. So I'm really excited to be able to talk with her and that we've managed to fit that into the schedule. So there will be that on Friday, but not a four part episode as I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. And now let's get to the texts. Uh, we are back to uh, having an Old Testament text. We are out of the season of Easter. We are into the season of Pentecost. And as such, we have an Old Testament text once again as that first reading, which is nice. I like to have that, that rounded out one from, you know, two from the Old Testament, two from the New Testament. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just like the pattern. But the first reading for today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1 verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. So we have the beginning of the Bible for Holy Trinity Sunday. And those verses are as follows. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning in the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seeds in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth the vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing the fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. 
And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. Or God, excuse me, God made the two lights, the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And so to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude, and on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. So again, that was our rather lengthy first reading for Holy Trinity Sunday. That was Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. And I want to talk more about this text, uh, but I do have to take the first break of the podcast. So when, when we come back, I will be talking a little bit more about this Genesis text and then moving on to the rest of the texts for today. Stay tuned and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. We are talking today about the text assigned for June 11th, Holy Trinity Sunday. And we just read the first chapter of the book of Genesis and the first four verses of the second chapter. And this might seem 
a bit of an odd choice for Holy Trinity Sunday. What does it have to do with the Trinity? But I gave you a heads up. I gave you a hint in that beginning section when I was talking about the Trinity, when I mentioned the Gospel of John and the beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That Word was Jesus. So Jesus is the Word. God uses the Word to create the heavens and the earth. God uses the Holy Spirit to create the heavens and the earth. All three aspects of God were in the beginning were there at the beginning of the creation of our world. And we see that later when it says God created them. He said, let us, let us make human beings in our image. And that sometimes pops out at you and said, and you think, wait, us, we, we believe in one God, right? There's not us. There's not a whole pantheon of gods. There's not this council of gods. And yet let us, let us, it, you know, you, some people think of it more as kind of the royal we, right? Instead of saying I, royalty sometimes refers to themselves as we, and God might be doing the same thing. But for me, this speaks of the Trinity. Let us make humankind's in humankind in our image. So God creates humans, God creates men and women in God's image. And to me, that is the Trinity. We are created in the image of the Trinity, which is pretty darn amazing when you think about it. So that was the first reading. We're going to move on now to the second reading, which is Psalm 8. And those verses are as follows. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and all the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And that was Psalm 8. And it's pretty easy to see how well that goes with the reading from Genesis. It's a, a little mini version of the, of the Genesis story it told in the context of praising God for God's creation, right? So uh, some of us know the song, Oh, you know, Oh Lord, my God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Some of us, some of us maybe sing that on a Sunday morning. We know that one. And that comes from this Psalm, Psalm eight. And here again, we have these images of God creating the earth of humans being made in God's image. So it's easy to understand why this is assigned for Holy Trinity Sunday. So the third the third text, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. So a very short, we, we, we're making up for that long Genesis text, right? By, by including some short, just a few verses in these other texts. So 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13 are as follows. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That was Second Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. In your denomination, in your church, do you have, do you say a version of those words? Does your pastor or someone else, uh, a minister of some kind in your church say the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all or be with all of you? they do in my church. They've always, they've done it, you know, in every church that I belong to, this is what we do at the beginning of what we call the passing of the peace, which is described here, you know, greet each other with a holy kiss. And I can't read these words. In fact, I, I almost said them as I was reading the, the verses today, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And I want to say, and also with you, that's the, how we, that's how we do that in my tradition. And it's just habit. Uh, many people joke that when Lutherans go to see Star Wars and someone in Star Wars says, the force be with you, you can tell the Lutherans in the crowd because they reply with, and also with you. Yeah, we're kind of nerdy. We understand. But 
This obviously is a Trinitarian um, blessing, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And then you get, uh, we do that at the passing of the peace. This is a God of love and peace. It is easy, again, as I said, to see why this is included on Holy Trinity Sunday. And finally, we have the gospel reading for today. And that gospel comes, we're moving out of the Gospel of John, which we've been reading throughout Easter, the season of Easter. And we are into the Gospel of Matthew for this Holy Trinity Sunday. Our text comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Again, that's Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, and our third verse, or our third reading of only a few verses to kind of make up for that very lengthy Genesis reading. But again, we have this reference to the Holy Spirit, or we have this reference to the triune God. This is the great commission that Jesus gives his disciples before he ascends. He tells them to go out to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that is where we get those words in the rite of baptism. Um, we baptize no matter how you do it, whether you do infants or adults, whether you do, you know, just uh, sprinkling, as some people call it, where you just put water on the head or whether it's a full submersion. It's always in those words, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We baptize in the name of the triune God. We baptize into the Holy Trinity and we get the promises of God. We get the promises of God through Jesus Christ and we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit just like we talked about last week on Pentecost, right? We too are given the gift of the Holy Spirit through our baptism. And I love how in this text, it's a very straightforward text. The disciples go to a mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And then when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some doubted. There's still that doubt in there, right? Even at this point, some people are still doubting. And to me, I just, I find that... I probably should find that maybe disturbing, but I find it comforting, actually, because there is room for doubt in our lives. Some are still a little confused, some are a little wary, and they are still there. Jesus still gives them the Great Commission. Jesus doesn't separate out those who worship and those who doubt. He doesn't say, you know, okay, those of you who doubted, I need you to go stand over there. This isn't for you. This isn't part of this. I'm not giving you this commission. Jesus gives the commission to everyone telling us to go out and talk to people and tell them about our life of faith, tell them about our relationship with Jesus, our relationship as a child of God, having brothers and sisters in God, in Christ, how we have been baptized in the triune God, in the name of the triune God, how we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, etc. This is our commission to go out and do God's work in the world. And Jesus ends that with, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We aren't set out alone. We are sent out with the Holy Spirit. We are sent out with God at our side, with Christ present in our lives to do this work. We are not sent out alone. We are never left alone in our relationship with God. So we are going to take our second break of the podcast. And when I come back, we'll be wrapping up this. Ooh, it's very Trinitarian. This third part of the whole, our, our text, our, excuse me, our podcast for Holy Trinity Sunday. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. (laughs) 
whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. We are talking about the texts assigned for Holy Trinity Sunday. This year, that is today, June 11th. And I was talking about the text from the Gospel of Matthew before we went to break. And that text is known as the Great Commission, right? The sending out of the disciples to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, etc. And, you know, when I... When I was in the parish, I remember talking to people about this text and having them be a little bit uncomfortable with this text. It makes them a little bit nervous. And the reason that might seem strange to some of you, and the reason that the text made them a little bit nervous is because I think that can be summed up in a comment, one specific comment that I heard. And that was that Jesus is sending out of his disciples sounds an awful lot like knocking on doors. And, uh, you know, every denomination is different. Every person is different. The way we share our faith is different. Lutherans as a whole, and I'm, I'm generalizing here, this doesn't mean that every Lutheran thinks this way, but we are not always comfortable evangelizing, even though that's in our name, right? Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, my particular denomination of Lutheranism. But we're not always great at walking up to someone and saying, Hi, I believe in God. Do you want to talk about it? We um, we get really uncomfortable when it comes to stuff like that. You might have a completely different experience. You might have grown up in a family. You might have grown up in a congregation. You might have grown up in a community where you are perfectly comfortable walking up to anybody and talking about your faith. And so for you, the words of the Great Commission might not make you nervous, but that really struck home for me because in certain situations for instance, a podcast or a sermon or something along those lines where I have a specific role, whether I'm the podcast host or I am the pastor or guest pastor or just, you know, the person in the pulpit preaching that day, I have no problem talking about my faith. Uh, to, you know, during Bible study when I would meet with my Bible study group regularly, no problem. Other situations where I'm not in that specific role, where I'm just, just Sarah, which is who I am all the time, right? Just Sarah, child of God, pretty amazing title right there. Gives me a lot of authority. Still couldn't quite, you know, I'm not always that comfortable. So many of us don't like the thought of sharing our faith with people, even people we've known our whole lives, let alone strangers. It can make us uncomfortable. And we don't necessarily have to go out and knock on doors, but the Great Commission does call us to go out into the world and to continue Jesus's work in the world. And whether we, you know, do that by knocking on doors or what, doing Jesus's work in the world involves not only doing that work by living out our faith, but it frequently involves talking about that faith as well. And there are various levels of being comfortable with this. And we are called out, we're called to not only go out and make disciples, we are called to go out and be disciples. So that begs the question of what does it mean to be a disciple? What does it mean to be a disciple in the world? And as a kid, I thought that that word disciple only referred to those 12 followers of Christ. I never thought that it meant me. I never thought of myself as a disciple until we talked about it in confirmation one night. And out of curiosity, I looked it up. And the word disciple, of course, does mean one of those 12 followers, but it also refers to one of the 70 that Jesus sent out to do ministry or any person who chooses to follow Christ during his or her lifetime. The next definition, oh, during his lifetime, during Jesus's lifetime, excuse me, I read that in the wrong tense. Any person who chose to follow Christ during his lifetime. That was one definition. The next definition, though, says that a disciple is any follower of Jesus, 
which is a pretty simple definition, kind of like the simpleness of the Holy Trinity, which isn't so simple, right? So if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably a pretty safe bet to say that you are a disciple. As followers of Jesus, as disciples, we have been called and we have been sent forth just as the 12 and more, just as the 12 were sent in today's gospel, just as those 70s were sent, the 70, not the 70s, the 70 were sent at a different part of the gospel. What we're called to do is to go out into the world and to live out our faith. We're called to go live out the promises that were made to and for us during our baptisms. And this means living lives of faith, finding places where our faith is nurtured, finding opportunities within our lives to share our faith, to share our lives of God. And this is another one of those examples of circular relationships, because as disciples, we live lives based on faith. And hopefully our actions, no matter what day of the week it is, are defined by that faith. And then being a part of a community and engaging in all the ministries of the church, whether that's local or state or worldwide or whatever it is, that nurtures our faith. Our faith, And then we're sent out from this place or that place, that community, to live as disciples. So it just is this big circle that goes and goes and goes. And it's one of those things that we are nurtured by the very things often that scare us. We are nurtured by sharing our faith with someone else. And that is a part of what it means to be a disciple. It means having our faith inform how we see the world, how we interact with that world. What you hear in a sermon or a Bible study or maybe even a podcast, I don't know, it might influence a conversation that you have one day at work that you you know, you're not even thinking about sharing your faith, but something that you heard may be stuck in your brain and you say something related to that. Something you learned in, let's say, Sunday school or Bible study, it might affect how you make a decision at some point. Your own personal devotions and prayers and Bible study hopefully have ramifications in the way that you live out the rest of your life, how you interact with people, how you weigh the pros and the cons in any decision. And I wish that I personally could say that I always live my life 100% from the foundations of my faith. I try, and sometimes it comes easier than others, but I can always tell when I've been living out the foundations of my faith because things usually seem to make a little bit more sense, and I feel a little bit more centered. And it doesn't mean that it's always easy or that I do everything right. Being a disciple, living out our faith, isn't a magic fix-all that suddenly makes everything make sense or all of our actions or sentences always correct. Sadly, no. We are called to be disciples out in the world. And as you may know, the world is a messy, messy place. But that's why it's so wonderful to have places where we can go and renew that faith. Whatever community it is that you go and, and worship with or study with or whatever it is, you can have your faith nurtured and refreshed and restored. And like I said, we're all disciples. We're all called and sent forth to live out our faith in the greater world. We're encouraged to take part in that greater world. We're encouraged to, you know, see how our lives as disciples informs what we do in the greater world. In all of our opportunities, no matter what they are, whether they're whether it's trying something new in your church, whether it's trying something new in at work, whether it's trying something new with your group of friends, we are called to be disciples. And so we are called to go and live out the great commission being disciples, being followers of not just God, but of Christ and of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Trinity Sunday, you notice that I didn't try to tell you what the Holy Trinity actually is, just how we are called to go out and share our faith as people who believe in a triune God, not multiple gods, but a God in three aspects, to go out and be a disciple and share our faith, even when we don't quite know how to explain what the heck the Holy Trinity actually is, right? We're still called to go out and live as disciples. We're still called out to, we're still called to go out into the world and live out our faith, the faith that we have in the God, in, in God, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So go out and be a disciple. That's all I can tell you. Go out knowing that God loves you and goes with you no matter what. And that is all the time that I have for today. I thank you, as always, for joining me. And I hope that you will join me um, on Friday when I'm having another of my interviews, my Friends on Faith on Fridays with my friend, Pastor Christine Emerson. She is wonderful, and I'm so excited to talk with her this week and hear her thoughts on her faith and how she's a disciple in the world. So again, thank you for joining me. Join me again on Friday, and then join me next week as we begin a new week of uh, new texts, and we'll see if I'm back to four-part episodes by next week. Hopefully things will be a little less crazy. In the meantime, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, any of the apps where you have you get um, podcasts for your mobile devices. And you can follow me on Twitter, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Follow me on social media. Have a great week. I hope to see you. You know what I mean. I hope you'll join me again on Friday. But in the meantime, remember that you're a disciple for one thing. But as a disciple, you are a beautiful and beloved child of God. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.